Okay, today we're going to look at troublesome verbs. There are three pairs of verbs that people get very confused about. Uh, the, each pair has two verbs that are very, very similar to each other and kind of have similar meanings, but not quite. And so when you're working with these particular pairs of verbs, uh, you need to be thinking carefully about uh, which one to use in which situation. Now, the key difference between the two in each pair is that one will be intransitive, which is to say it's something that's done by oneself. Or to put it another way, in grammatical terms, it doesn't have a direct object. It's not done to anything. Uh, the person doing the verb is just uh, doing it by oneself. Now, the other uh, form of verb is called transitive. And transitive verbs are verbs that are done to something. So what that means is a transitive verb has a direct object that is, do, that is being acted upon. So the first pair of confusing verbs, and this is probably the one that confuses people more than any other, uh, is lie versus lay. And these two verbs are the ones you find misused more often than any other. And the key to remember, as I said, is it's done to yourself or done to something else. So lie means to recline. That is to say, to be in a horizontal position. So this is not done to something. When you lie, you are becoming horizontal. Whereas lay is the transitive one. That's done to something. And that means to put something down. So the difference is, are you doing it without acting on any other object, or are you doing it to something. So in the tenses that you use for these particular verbs, uh, the present tense of lie is lie. Uh, for example, every day I lie on the beach. That's our present tense for that. Now this is where it gets tricky and probably where people get confused, um, is the past tense of lie is lay. So if I say yesterday I lay on the beach, that's the past tense of lie. That means I was on the beach on my back on a towel or whatever. Then the present participle is lying. I enjoy lying on the beach. Uh, so that, once again, uh, is just being horizontal. And then finally, we have the past participle of lie, which is uh, lane. I have lain on the beach many a time. So this one in particular sounds very, very weird because people misuse this so often. And the reason they misuse it so often is because it's easily confused with lay. So if we look at lay in our present tense, um, I lay my books on my desk every day. That's the present tense. Uh, the past tense is laid. Yesterday, I laid my books on the desk. Um, the present participle is laying. Um, I am in the habit of laying my books in the same place so I don't lose them. And then the past participle is laid. I have laid my books on the desk every day for 15 years. So this is the one that's uh, the most important to think, is there a direct object? And if you're doing it to something, then you're going to use lay. But if you're just doing it yourself, it's intransitive, you use the um, lie. 
Um, and by the way, there is uh, one exception that you can think of is uh, where uh, lay is transitive, which is the colloquial slang term meaning to uh, engage in uh, sexual intercourse, uh, which is usually not going to be used in uh, a formal essay. But if, for example, you say, oh, yesterday I laid on the beach, uh, what you're really saying is you've got some sand in some uncomfortable places. Um, another thing is I'll hear it in songs all the time. People say, lay down. Uh, there was a song that was popular way back in the Dark Ages when I was a teenager uh, where the chorus was, let me lay down beside you. And to lay down, well, down is fluffy feathers. So if you're laying down, you're putting fluffy feathers somewhere. And in this particular song, uh, he sings this like 13 times. So you really have to hope that uh, the girl isn't allergic to feathers because he's laying down by her side over and over again through the song. Uh, also, when you're training your dog, train your dog to lie down, because telling the dog to lie down means go horizontal on the floor. If you tell the dog to lay down, once again, you're telling the dog to put feathers somewhere. And so especially if you have a border collie, you may end up with a whole lot of feathers in your uh, training area. So that's the difference between these two. Um, the other or the second pair of tricky verbs is um, sit versus set. Sit means to be seated. So if you're going to say sit down, you sit down in a chair. Set is a very similar meaning to lay. Set means to put something down. So once again, when we ask, do, it, do we do it ourselves or do we do it to something else? So in sit, um, the present tense will be sit. I sit in my comfy chair every day. The past tense will be sat. Yesterday, I sat in my comfy chair. The present participle is sitting. I enjoy sitting in my comfy chair. And the past participle is sat. I have sat in my comfy chair for many years. So once again, we look at the transitive. It's doing to something. We look at the various tenses set. Every day I set my books on the desk. The past tense is set as well. Yesterday I set my books on the desk. Um, the pa present participle is setting. Um, I am in the habit of setting my books in the same place so I always know where to find them. And the, the past participle once again is set. I have set my books in the same place for decades. Now, the third challenging pair of verbs, then, is rise versus raise. Rise means to move upward. Whereas raise is to bring something up or cause something to go up. So once again, we have the difference being one thing is done by oneself, the other thing is done to something. So in our tenses, rise. Every day I rise promptly at noon. Um, the past tense of this is rose. Yesterday I overslept and rose at one. Uh, the present participle, rising. I am in the habit of rising at noon every day. And then finally, the past participle is risen. 
I have risen at noon for most of my life. Uh, going back to the, intra or the transitive version of rays, bringing something up, um, we have the present t uh, tense is rays. I raise well-behaved cats. The past tense is raised. Last year, I raised two wonderfully well-behaved cats. Uh, the past participle, I mean the present participle, is raising. I enjoy raising cats. And the past participle is raised. I have raised many well-behaved cats in my life. So these are the main troublesome verbs that you want to think about. Um, again, keep asking yourself, are you doing it to something or are you doing it by yourself? Now, there are a few exceptions, not very many, where things that normally would be transitive are intransitive or vice versa. For example, we talk about the sun rises, so it's not doing anything. Um, it also sets. So rises actually is the tr intransitive the way it usually is, but sets is normally an in a transitive verb. In this case, it's intransitive. The sun is setting. Uh, another exception is chickens. lay. Uh, so what this means is there's actually an implied egg in the equation. Uh, when we say the chickens are laying well, it means they're laying eggs well. Um, but we use that without having a direct object in the sentence. Uh, we have glue or other hardening things, concrete, whatever, uh, that sets, meaning it hardens up. Uh, so, again, this is intransitive, where usually set is transitive. And then the final exception is that we sit small children. So, where normally sit is intransitive, when we are talking about what we're doing with small children, it becomes transitive. We sit them. For example, you would say, sit the baby in her high chair, uh, rather than set her in the high chair, which actually sounds a little weird. I would probably uh, rephrase the sentence and say either put the baby in the high chair or, set or, um, or uh, seat the baby in the high chair, something like that. But except for these exceptions here, most of the time, these are the rules you need to wor worry about. And as I said, uh, especially when you're training your dog. Don't train your dog to lay down. Train your dog to lie down.